Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be looking at the best GPUs for the Adobe Creative Cloud. What kind of performance you get is really dependent on the system that you've got. And a uh, part of a uh, really, very, really, really important part is obviously going to be the graphics card. So we're going to be not recommending just the most powerful because we all want that, but we're going to be recommending something, some stuff that's affordable. Uh, mid-range cards and then we're going to be ending with the high-end cards now the first recommendation is actually not a graphics card it's a cpu and some of you who've watched some of the previous videos on this channel may not be surprised but uh, if you're new to the channel you'll probably be very surprised about this this is the amd ryzen 7 5700g it came out last summer and it has the most powerful onboard graphics for any desktop CPU currently available from AMD. The graphics core, well, there are eight graphics cores and these give you sufficient power to be able to work inside of Adobe Creative Cloud. You can work at 4K inside of Photoshop, Illustrator, get all the hardware acceleration that you can out of those softwares. And when it comes to video editing, you can do reasonable 1080p and a little bit of 4K editing inside of Premiere Pro and After Effects. Where this is not very powerful is going to be with Adobe Dimension and also with uh, Substance 3D. I'm gonna have a link to a couple of videos that I've done. It really does pay to have a well-configured system in order to get the best out of this. It's possible to actually overclock it. You can get very decent overclocks on the CPU as well as on the GPU. I'll have some links to some content that might help you along if you want to learn more about the 5700G. Not actually a recommendation, but more some advice. If you did go for the 5700G, you might benefit also from getting a cheap card like the 6500 XT. This one is much, much more powerful than the graphics on the 5700G. It has some limitations, however, when it comes to video exports, and those limitations are compensated for by the 5700G. 169 pounds on the UK Amazon site. This one is pretty good value. I would recommend it only if you're pairing it with the 5700G. So the next card I'm going to recommend at the entry level is the GTX 1650 from NVIDIA GeForce. Now this is a gaming card and the card came out a few years ago. It's powerful enough that it will give you very decent performance in Photoshop, Illustrator, that kind of basic software where you don't need enormous graphics power. It will also enable you to start editing inside of Adobe Dimension, maybe 1080p and it will give you pretty decent 1080p performance inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, inside of After Effects. It hasn't got sufficient power to really make a huge amount of difference, but if you need to use some of the video editing software at 1080p, this is pretty powerful, and you wanna pair it maybe with an entry-level CPU. It will give you pretty decent performance. And I would say also, at four gigabytes of VRAM, it's going to allow you to do all the hardware acceleration that you want inside of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Moving on to the mid-range GPUs. The recommendation, the first recommendation is going to be for the RTX 3050. This is a card, very new card. It came out actually in January. And when it came out, it was a bit of a mystery. We didn't know at that time how it was actually going to test, how it was actually going to perform. The performance is good. It's eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It comes with sufficient power to allow you to work in 4K. You can even now start working in 6K inside of Premiere Pro and After Effects. And with this one, you can use it for Adobe Dimension. You can also use it for Substance 3D. The one that we're looking at here is the EVGA GeForce RTX 3050 XC Gaming. This is a decent build. This is a pretty decent brand, uh, a decent build 
with this one, there's something somewhat weird, which I did notice and I want to point out to you. Uh, it's selling for $358.95 in the main box on Amazon.com from a third party seller. If we go down to the other sellers on Amazon, you can see it's selling for $299.99, so less than $300. And it's being sold by Amazon.com. Not only that, we've got free shipping and the shipping is same day. It, 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 literally, they can get this out to you next day. With this one, it's gonna be next week. So I'm not sure why Amazon are hiding this much, much better offer with lower price, $60 lower price, faster shipping. It comes from a very reliable seller from amazon.com. I'm not sure why they're hiding it down in the other sellers rather than promoting it to, to the main box. Now that could be a glitch in their software, which is what I suspect is happening there, or it could be a policy. This has been going on for several days now. So that's something to be aware of. It would be an easy way to save $60 on this particular offering. And if you were to see this on some of the more expensive cars, you could save quite a lot of money if Amazon uh, are again uh, selling at a pretty decent discount. So do keep an eye out for these offers, these kind of hidden offers from Amazon. Like I say, I think it's a glitch, but it could be a policy. The RTX 3050 does offer you RTX extras. That's real-time ray tracing. The RTX features are more important, I would say, for gaming rather than for content creation. So there are a lot of things that involve AI acceleration now in the Creative Cloud. And there are a lot of features that involve hardware acceleration, like video outputs. The eight gigabytes of VRAM in this particular hardware is going to give you a lot of performance. So even though it is a couple, it is about a hundred dollars more expensive than the 1650, I think the value of it is pretty significant. The next card we're going to look at in the mid level range uh, is going to be the RTX 3060. This bad boy comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's significantly more than the previous ones that we've looked at. I'm going to make this my main recommendation for the Adobe Creative Cloud. I think 90% of folk using the Adobe Creative Cloud will be happy with this bad boy. The one we're looking at, the RTX 3060 XC Gaming, again from EVGA, this is a pretty decent build. With this one, we have got Amazon actually selling it in the, in the main box. I can tell you, I've been looking at the prices for this one for a few days now, and sometimes Amazon have this in stock literally for a few hours before it sells out. Uh, then they have a few more in, maybe maybe a lot more in, but it does sell out every few hours and they seem to be restocking. F from, from what's happening, I, I think what's happening is that they're getting several deliveries a day. Uh, and if you just happen to be lucky, you're gonna see it in stock and you're gonna be able to get it at this $389.99 price. If you are not so lucky, you might find it coming in at around $500 with the third party sellers. So with this one, it's a question of timing. Time it right, you're gonna get it at this this kind of like 10% discount price, which Amazon have managed to, to, to introduce it at. EVGA is a good brand. They're not the brand that I would go for, particularly if I wanted a very low noise environment. That would probably be MSI for low noise. Uh, for very good acoustics. But EVGA has got a very good uh, reputation. I would say when you purchase these bad boys, make sure you register them as soon as you get them. With EVGA, EVGA, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but with some of the other suppliers, um, Zotac, for instance, you'll get a three-year warranty soon as you get receipt of the item. If you register it, they increase it to five years. I think that's the industry leader for warranties. Uh, I think MSI Gigabyte, again, register it as soon as you get it, you will find that you get a slightly longer warranty at, just by registering it. With the RTX 3060, it will give you performance that you need at 4K, at 6K. It can open up 8K video and it can export 8K video. But again, I'm gonna say, that we might need to leave the 8K stuff for a more powerful GPU. Another thing to bear in mind is that 
at around this price point, we begin to get some of the manufacturers differentiating on aesthetics. So you find products that have a completely white aesthetic. That's good for your high contrast builds. If you want something with a little bit of black, a little bit of white, you may have to pay extra just for the aesthetics. You're not going to be getting extra necessarily for performance. If you want something that looks a little bit different, be prepared to pay a little bit more money for that. So we move on to the high end, the RTX 3080. This one comes in two varieties. Some of them are 10 gigabytes and some of them are 12 gigabytes. Uh, I would recommend if you can go in for the 12 gigabyte one, that'll be a little bit more expensive. It'll give you more, more video RAM to play with. This one is going to be GDDR6X. Uh, GDDR6X starts off not at the 3080, but starts off, I believe, at the 3070 Ti, which is the one just below this one. But I feel with this particular one, it's the one that you would be using if you're going to do a lot of 8K video editing. That uh, 10, 12 gigabytes of VRAM, that is going to be good for you for your uh, video editing at 8K. You might even want something a bit more powerful if you're doing a, a lot of 8K video editing, maybe a lot of 3D graphics. It's going to be overkill for most people. Like I said before, make sure as soon as you get it, you register it so you get that longer warranty. In case there are any problems, you can get a, a replacement. Now with graphics cards at the RTX 3080 level, you are going to need a power supply, probably a 750 watts minimum. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking the power supply requirements for the individual card. That would apply as well for the RTX 3060. Sometimes some manufacturers have super powerful cards that have super uh, massive energy requirements. 750 watts is usually the starting point. You may find some manufacturers want you to have something much more substantial than that. Now the RTX 3080 is going to be probably overkill for most people, but some people do need something a little bit more. So we're going to be taking a look at some mentions for maybe higher performance even than this. Uh, these are not going to be straightforward recommendations, but I want to sort of cover what benefits you get if you go above this sort of price point for about a thousand dollars. Now, before we move into that, let's talk about the restock and reloaded. Now, this is something you might not be aware of, but over the last 18 months, graphics card prices have gone from normal to about two or three times their normal level before falling back once again to fairly normal price range. During that time, some sellers, including Amazon, completely stopped selling some GPUs. They did not have them in stock for most of 2021. Now, the reason for that is almost certainly there was a huge amount of demand from cryptocurrency mining. Now, there's nothing retailers like, like Amazon can do. However, some of the third party sellers on Amazon were increasing the price and they increased the price in some cases to two or three times the previous price. The restock and reloaded event was something that happened a couple of weeks ago. Nvidia decided to increase the supply of cards in order to try to bring prices down. Now, it's been very, very effective. And what we've seen are prices now in their usual range. That is something to bear in mind because that restock and reloaded has happened for, a, for, for Nvidia. It hasn't happened so much with AMD but Nvidia's prices are now where we would usually expect them to be. It doesn't mean they're going to remain at that reasonable level. They might go up, they might come down even more, but the threat of them going up is not something that we should completely take outside of our view. With Restock and Reloaded, the prices that we're seeing now, particularly if you're getting stock that has been introduced by Amazon right in the last couple of weeks, the prices you're going to get are going to be reasonable. Some of the third party sellers will have stock from last year that is still at the super inflated prices. So you want to be careful about which items you purchase and you want to make sure that you're getting a decent price. So that might mean 
coming to Amazon and just checking the prices over the course of a couple of days. If you find Amazon have got their stuff in stock and the price is reasonable, you go you go ahead and go for that. If Amazon cannot get it in stock, then maybe look at some of the third party sellers. Now, the other thing I wanted to, to mention is that the graphics cards that we're looking at are all gaming cards. Every single one of the ones that we looked at are designed for gaming. However, the NVIDIA GTX and the NVIDIA RTX cards that we've looked at do allow you to download and install what are known as studio drivers. These studio drivers give you some of the features that you would get in professional drivers. Uh, that means, for instance, 10-bit uh, output uh, in Premiere Pro in Photoshop. That kind of uh, consideration is a significant one and a very important consideration when it comes to choosing between AMD and NVIDIA. Those studio drivers are only found with NVIDIA. If we take a look at the best-selling graphics cards, this is the UK Amazon site. You can see the built-in graphics. This is the 5600G, slightly lower power performance, uh, lower performance uh, CPU compared to the one that I was talking about earlier on. That is, that is in number one position. We've got the 6500 XT that I was talking about at about 169 uh, pounds. That one is in third position. Those are pretty much the only AMD graphics cards that we are seeing in this list of 100. Everything else is NVIDIA. When it comes to restock and reloaded, NVIDIA have done it much, much better than AMD. Therefore, they're getting almost all the sales. You'll have a link to, to this page. You'll have a link to all the products uh, in, the, in the description. Keep an eye out on this page. If we start seeing the, uh, the, the, the AMD products, uh, actually appearing more and more in the list, it may mean that the uh, restock and reloaded for NVIDIA is beginning to wane. Uh, it may also mean that AMD are beginning to get more stock available for buyers and their prices are beginning to fall. There are some people who will want something a little bit more powerful. Let's take a look and see what you get if you're willing to spend a little bit more money. Now, the RTX 3090 Ti came out in March, April. This one is currently the most powerful gaming card on the planet. It has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. In terms of its overall performance, a little bit more powerful than the 3090, a little bit more powerful than the 3080 Ti. But you are getting diminishing returns at these sorts of levels. And I think the consensus is that at $2,000, it's a little bit overpriced. You might want to go for something like the 3090 if you want that 24 gigabytes of VRAM. AMD do have a series of cards called the AMD Radeon Pro cards. Some of those come with up to 32 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you have got a workflow that requires an enormous amount of VRAM, you may be able to benefit from having something like that. And that's going to be something like $2,500. But if your workflow does require something with that amount of VRAM, you may actually find that that's something that is uh, not just affordable. It may actually make your work a lot easier to do. The Radeon Pro cards will have certification for software that other cars simply don't have. So they'll be po it'll be possible to use them at a professional level with certain 3D software that just is, is not something that you would want to pair with a, a gaming card like these powerful uh, RTX cards from NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA have got their own professional cards, the NVIDIA Quadro cards. Those have this, exactly the same considerations apply. They are not quite as powerful as the gaming cards, but they do have certification for use with certain software. So if you're going to be using alongside the Creative Cloud, you're going to be doing 3D software, professional 3D software, computer aided design. You want to check what the system requirements are for that software so that you can actually get something that works with that software as well as the Creative Cloud. That is it for this one, guys. I'll have lots of links in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video. Disagree